Howdy, howdy, and welcome to another Old School Gamer. We are going to continue our progress in Day of the Tentacle. So last we let off, we finished the battery for Hoagie's uh, line. Problem is, it's got no charge. So it is time for Hoagie to invent electricity. All right, so let's take a look. We have this thing in our it's inventory. It's mine, mine, mine. The meter says that it's at zero power. Zero power. How unfortunate. And we used a lighter it's with it. It's not a toy. I don't want to. Can't use the hammer with it. I think not. I think not. All right. Anything else we've got in here? Can we use the textbook with the battery? I'd rather not. Nope. All right. So, the next thing we've got to do is fill this battery with 1.21 big watts. To do that, we need to talk to Franklin. And to talk to Franklin, we need a good thunderstorm going. And if there is one thing that we learned on Bernard's path, it's that washing your car... It's totally covered with crud. Is that sometimes washing your car makes it rain. Let's see, I think it was Bernard's run. Great, Scott! Yeah, I'm horrible with accents. <laughs> 1.21 gigawatts! Look at filthy old car. It's really dirty. Someone oh. wrote, wash me in the dust. Some people think that washing one's vehicle will make it rain. Oh. Uh-huh. How about that? Well, how about that? I want to see real quick. Because we have the soap and the water. Like if we wash out the paint. I don't want to. I don't want to. I won't be able to get it very clean without oh, soap. Dope. All right, so let's give... I don't think I can put that in the chronogen. Ah, uh, okay. That's what prevents it all. Oh, but you can't send the soap through the chronogen. Old-fashioned lie in a new, more convenient size. <laughs> all right, let's send that back to him. Put the soap. The water's all sudsy now. It's, all it's full sudsy. of soapy water. I don't think I can put that in the oh, chronogen. Man. Here we go. Dum de dum. Dum de dum. And suddenly. Looks like a big storm. See, this is why I never wash my car. <laughs> Mr. Franklin, what you doing? Hey, Ben. Oh, it's you. Where are you going? What about your experiment? Even science sometimes gets cold on account of rain, my boy. My boy. But how are you ever going to get lightning if you're not going to stand out in a storm? To be frank, which I am, I don't know. The science of electrodynamics, much like your mind apparently, is still in a state of relative infancy. <laughs> Back to the drawing board, I say. To what the drawing a board. genius. <laughs> I wonder if there's anything, like, out in the open field when he runs away. Or if it's just literally an empty field. Walk to empty field. One thing I realized we forgot to do is you can actually go out to um, the guys when they're standing outside of the building um, in the previous scene where you're getting the golden quill and talk to them, and apparently it's like a null dialogue or something like that. Um, that's something I'm going to have to, like, load back up at some point in the future and get that. Get that they actually count that as an achievement, too. Alright, so there was nothing in the field, so let's go upstairs and talk to Franklin. I feel like I've got two different songs going on at the same time. 
Let's see, that was Washington, that was... And there he is. I don't quite see how it can fly. Oh, he I makes no comment. I don't quite see how it can fly. Hi. Hi. Sorry, he can't talk. Busy making history. Man, no talking, Hi. huh? Hi. Sorry, he can't talk. Busy making history. I'm trying to figure out what the hint is because I know what to do next, but I want the game to kind of at least naturally give us an idea. So let's. I don't quite see how okay, it can that's fly. All good. Hey, what's that on the plan? It looks like a secret backwards message. Oh, it's just a coffee stain. Alright, so... No, I think I better stay on his good side. <laughs> I don't wanna. Juan, welcome! That doesn't need a battery. Use a hammer with I don't want to. Oh, man. You want to borrow this great book? Is it lightweight and waterproof? Hmm. Uh, no. Then I have no use for it. Interesting. Okay. So he actually gives a hint there. Nah, I like it the way it is. Hey, it's not a toy. <laughs> this is a toy. I think not. Oh, I think not. Okay, so that's interesting. The... He gives a hint when you try to use the book with him, but I didn't feel like it gave us a hint any other way. So something that's lightweight and waterproof. Let's... Look at the lab coat and see if it tells us anything about it. It looks more like a raincoat than a lab coat. Mm. It looks more like a raincoat than a lab So that coat. gives us a little hint there. I wonder what happens if we use the textbook with Red Edison. Thermodynamic flux induction circuit design is perhaps the most fascinating branch of practical electrical theory. Stop! That book's starting to put me to sleep. Hmm. That is interesting. All right. What else can we use the book with? All right. Well, let's get... Oh, that's right. One more hint. Let me try to pick up the lab coat. Hey! Only employees are allowed to use that lab coat. So how do you find employees? Help wanted. Lab assistant. Hard-working, moronic drone needed to assist genius with experiments. High school diploma. Not required. Now, I'm wondering if there's some other circumstances we can use this. I'm just curious. We're going to take Laverne down to the other Edisons and just see if we can use this. Or... Actually, let's try Laverne with Purple Tentacle. Oh, that's not Purple Tentacle. Meanwhile... Tell me, Lieutenant, how do you really feel about humans? Honestly, sir, I think they're filthy, obscene, foul, sickening, like the stuff in your eyes when you wake up, like the wax that builds up behind your suction cups after a few days. The dialogue is a little off. <laughs> like that's enough, son. I just wanted to be sure you weren't one of those humanist sympathizers. What with this ridiculous human show going on here, there's humophiles everywhere. I'm no humophile, sir. That's good. Now let me tell you about a little plan I have. Let's see if I can pronounce your name. <laughs> uh... Nobunaga? Nobunaga Sensei. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. I am doing well. How about yourself? Ah. Ah. Wonder if we can use this with him. I don't think so. Aw, oh, man. 
Alright, let's quickly go to the other um, Edison that is in this time period and see if we can use it with him. That is. Zap, zap. Oh well, we can't use that later. So let's go ahead and use it here and use the sign with Red Edison. What's this? Mm, help wanted, moronic drone, mm, assist genius, yada yada yada. Well, I'm the only genius around, and you look dumb enough. Uh, so pick up your lab coat and get to work. It looks more like a raincoat than a lab coat. All right. It looks more like a raincoat. Okay, than can a we lab use coat. it? It looks kind of small for me. It looks kind of small for me. It looks kind of small for me. Give raincoat to. I don't think I can put that in the chrono. Okay, chart. so it's too small to get other dialogue out of it. Had to try. Can we it use... looks kind of oh. small for me. Give raincoat to. Oh, we can't give it to the mummy. Use raincoat. It looks kind of small oh, for man. me. I wonder if we can give it to Red Edison what he does. I just want to see. It looks kind of small for me. Or give. Lab coat to Red Edison. What am I supposed to do with that? I'm also curious if we give him the book. I've not done that yet. What am I supposed to do with that? Okay, fine. I can't reach it. No, I want you to go through the door. <laughs> Alright, Hoagie, okay, let's give that lab coat over to Ben Franklin. since we did technically get a hint out of them. I got something good for you, I got mister. something good for you. I got some uh, good. mister. Mr. Brainstorm? <laughs> yes, hand it over. Hand it over. Hmm. Doesn't this belong to somebody? Hmm. Yeah, Red Edison. Ah. I'm sorry, but the man has no vision. A lightweight, durable fabric like this is going to waste down in his basement. When I'm done with it, it will fly. Hmm. Eureka! The all-season Francocopter, ready to make history. Oh, okay. So it goes straight to this. We don't even have to walk downstairs. No, there's no fuse. So <laughs> what do I light? For the last time, you're not going to light anything. <laughs> you just push it. The whole time? How am I going to get up that high? <laughs> Listen, just wait for me to say the word now. Then push the kite into the air, all right? I'm on you, lasagna. <laughs> Let's hope so. All right, we've got to quickly use the battery with the kite. Pocket. Now! And then push it. Whee! Actually, I should have pushed it at the wrong time because if you do that, it just falls to the ground. Kind of funny. You got it. Just hang on there. She's too heavy. I can't control her. I can't hold it together, hang Captain. Hang on, Ben. Hang on. She's breaking up. She's breaking up. Run for your life! Run for your life. Now that was interesting. Yeah. Say, can I see that kite for a second? No, I'm taking it back to my lab in Philly right now so I can study the results. Wish me luck. I never got your name. It's Hoagie, sir. Nice working with you, Hoagie. I promise to name an invention after you someday. Gosh, thanks. Gosh, thanks. 
The lightning must have charged it up. Get up. All right. Let's see. The meter says it's fully, fully powered. powered. Perfect. All right. So we have a fully powered uh, salad battery. The other thing is, what's funny is that I'm assuming that Franklin's reference is like the invention of a sandwich with Hoagie. But yet, George Washington always, or not George Washington, but one of the people in this time period already associated it with the sandwich. So I'm not sure. Speaking of sandwiches, <laughs> I was not expecting that. All right. Is there anything else we can use the battery with? I'm just trying to think. No, I think that's it. All right. So we're going to use the battery with the plug. Whoa. Congratulations, Hoki has a fully powered chronogen. Can we pick the battery back up? No, it's right where I want it. It's right where I want it. Can you I use don't it? want it. Can you use the chronogen? Well, I'm all ready to go, but I guess I'll have to wait for Bernard and Laverne. Oh, and we can look at the tree after it's done. Scratch one kumquat tree. No way could I pick that up. Well, I tried. All right, so technically Hoagie's route is done. So we just have to get the other two routes ready. Can we wash the carriage again? Just for the fun of it? Uh, it's clean enough for me. All right, fair enough. Can we paint it? Nah, I like it the way it is. All right, Hoagie, that's fine. All right, so we have a human contest to deal with. We've got to go all the way upstairs. Oh, actually, there's one person we have not fully engaged in dialogue yet. It's uh, Mr. Tentacle Guard. Nice clock. Nice yes, clock. Yeah, that's my pickup line. I'd like to show it to you, but I'm presently charged with the task of guarding it. No one will get near it while I'm here. Hi. Now I'm I say hi. Learn. Learn, eh? Curious name for a tentacle, I must say. Are you here for the show? Yes, that's right. Well, that voice. good luck to you then. There are some jolly good prizes to be won. Why, the grand prize is a dinner for two at Club Tentacle. Couldn't I please touch the clock? Sorry, no. No one touches the clock while I am on duty. I use that line all the time at work. I, I have to tell people there is no touching the clock while I'm on duty. Aren't you curious about what's inside the clock? Not really. Guarding it is more or less the same no matter what's inside. Hmm, has anybody ever escaped has from this? Has anyone ever escaped from this place? Some try once in a while, but I always fetch them back. That's my primary duty here, and I take it very seriously. I always get my man, no matter how long it takes. Why, I once trailed a renegade human for six days. He led me clear through the hills and up to the top of those mountains to the west. You couldn't possibly imagine the horrible things I had to eat to survive. Let's see, our options are... Grub and maggot salad. Putrefied squirrel intestines. Pieces of your own body. Coleslaw. I'm gonna answer coleslaw. Coleslaw? Good heavens! Well, be seeing you. Yes, perhaps I can regale you with further tales of my tracking expertise. <laughs> Alright, so let's see if we use it with the card. I say, that is a repulsive habit. Oh well, try it. Hey, I wonder if we use the disappearing ink with purple tentacle. I'm honestly just curious. I need to know. Ah. 
He might clap me in irons if I do that. Oh, he's gonna do it. Oh, right in the eye. That trick has got to be older than I am. Chuckle, chuckle. <laughs> well, we tried it, and that was fun. All right. So, what do we need to do next? We are doing the human contest. Unfortunately, and the so I said to her, "That's not my suction cup." <laughs> That's listen to this. Well, that was funny. Let's talk to the judges. When are you going to judge best hair, smile, and laugh? Anyone care for a bribe? Keep up the good work, you judges, you. Hey, Thanks. anybody care for a bribe? What do you think we are, human? Ha ha ha! Human. <laughs> Alright, so no bribes. Let's talk to you. Dr. Tentacle. Doctor! What is it? Is someone sick? We can't have sick humans in the show. Well, uh... <laughs> I examined them all myself. Oh, that They're laugh. They're perfectly healthy Ugh, looking to me. That laugh. Except for the dead one. Now leave me alone. Except for the dead one. So he's clearly dead. But acceptable in the contest. That's true, the music is very fun for this. <laughs> All right, so we need a laugh, we need hair, and we need a smile. So we know Hoagie's got the smile that we need. Let's give that to Laverne. Excuse me, so that was from the horse. And the laugh, that was from Bernard. I think we already gave that to Laverne. Oh, I wonder if we already put it on the mummy. Let me just double check. Yeah, nobody else has it. So. Let's talk to the judges about checking for best laugh. Hey, when are you guys going to judge best laughing? <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, that's scary. Oh, the commentary on those tentacles walking like okay, the way they do. who's got a joke? Hey, I just flew in from Baltimore, and boy, are my suction cups tired. <laughs> a classic. A classic. <laughs> I think our mummy friend picked up a sense of humor somewhere. Yes, but Harold still tops him. Oh, mm. of course. Harold wins hands down. But if it weren't for Harold, I'd let the mummy have it. Hint, hint. Agreed. Agreed. All right, so they're kind of hinting that we need to do something to get rid of Harold. And there's also Dr. Tentacle who's involved. So, we've got our hints there. But, there's no penalty in going through the process. So let's go ahead and do it without the smile first. And then we'll add the smile. Hey, are you guys going to judge best smile? Oh, alright. Oh, alright. But anyway, the developer commentary talks about why they had to in animate the tentacles the way they did. Um, it's really cool, so I recommend picking up the yeah, game and listening to developer sure commentary on this. Them, it's really good. I could see my reflection in one of his incisors. First place. Alright, so Harold wins again, so let's add some teeth. We don't have any, uh... Wow! These are huge! We don't have any way to brush them, but we'll give it a go. So our mummy now has a smile. Wow, what a smile that is. Hey, don't 
you think you should judge best smile again? Oh, all right. Oh, all right. <laughs> you know, that quiet one on the bandages has the biggest smile I've ever seen. I've never seen. But his teeth aren't as pearly white as Harold's. Oh, of course, there's no comparison. But I think we should give second place to the mummy, because he maintains it for so long. Agreed. That's like a very plain spoken, like normal human voice tentacle right there. <laughs> Alright, so the other thing that we need is hair. And one thing that we can use for hair, if we flush it somebody else, it gets wet in the process. Wet soggy noodles. Well, let's go through the process. Let's judge it without hair. Oh, Don't you think you I should clicked the wrong one. Smile again? Oh, all right. So just fair warning, this is not coffee in the mug. <laughs> I'm a little stronger. The quiet one on the bandages has the biggest smile I've ever seen. But his teeth aren't as pearly white as Harold's. Oh, of course, there's no comparison. But I think we should give second place to the mummy, because he maintains it for so long. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Let's do best hair first. The mummy has no hair, so obviously that's going to be interesting. I just really want to see all the dialogue to this when you do it wrong, quote unquote. As usual, no one competes with Harold. Agreed. A lightning bolt stars in the moon in it. And it's also blue. In the, wor in the words of uh, Strongbit, you gotta have blue hair. Which sounds, un my unfortunately, sounds more like Yoda than anything else, but I tried. All right. I like how you can go through the entire contest, but nobody win, or until you're, you get things right, the contest isn't over, which is very convenient. 20XG6, thank you. Let's see, let's look at the mummy's head. Well, it's better than it used to be, but it still lacks control. control. All right, let's talk to the judges and hey, do best hair again. Hey, don't you think you should judge best hair again? Oh, all right. Oh, all right. I like how the judges can just totally be pushed around. I also like how they're all wearing fezzes. All judges must wear fezzes. Harold's got some amazing hair. The mummies has improved. Yes, that's true. Yes, I've always wondered it's about dull, that. Flat, stringy, lacks body and control. Whereas Harold's flows and bounces with every subtle turn of his head. Yes, Harold wins. If only the mummies was a little bit better. Agreed. Hint, hint. And if anybody's ever watched The Little Mermaid, they know exactly where this is going next. Yes, and I... Shall I totally affirm that? And when I was younger and I played this game I had the completely immature joke of the idea that this goes through a toilet so what are the meatballs yeah I know it's absolutely disgusting but that's that's what went through my head as a kid um and I'm just gonna lay that out there and be totally honest with that train of thought so little, let's little mermaid this hair and get the dingle hopper. I don't think so. Oh, we can use a fork with the contest area. That's good to know. Um, and use the fork with the mummy's head. And also random meatball. Yeah, 
I'm, I'm completely disgusted right now. <laughs> so let's look at it. Well, he's got an impressive smile, a nice hearty laugh, and luscious, stylish hair. Stylish hair. In other words, not a chance in it. Let's talk to Harold now. Let's see how he's feeling. Howdy. Oh, look. Red, white, and blue. Is that look coming back in again? <laughs> Howdy, Harold. Howdy, I'm sure. I'm just curious. No, I don't think we can actually remove the um, Pentaclaw costume once we have it on. Highly restricted judging area. All right, so let's talk to the judges again now that we've got the hair. Hey, don't you think you should judge best hair again? Oh, all right. Oh, all right. That's some great looking hair. I like yes, how they admit it has it a certain mummy. meatiness. Meatiness. But does it have stars and lightning bolts? No, Harold is still the best. But if Harold were to say drop dead, <laughs> I'd give first place to the mummy. Agreed. Ooh. Ooh, I like that thought. Let's try the scalpel first. Yes, I'm making Edison hands now. Can we use the fork with? I don't. Oh. Let's see. Use fork with Harold. I can win this contest without cheating. Well, at least without actually killing anybody. At least without actually killing anybody. Let's give the scalpel back. Let's try it again. I can win this contest okay, without same thing. cheating. Well, at least without actually killing anybody. Hmm. Let's use that fake barf and... Oh, Harold, that's gross. What are you babbling about? You really should have told the judges if you weren't feeling well. Hmm. Oh, ick. Now, how did that mess get in there? I think I'm going to be sick. Uh -oh. Someone here not feeling well. I was feeling fine until I saw that. Hmm. Is that your regurgitation? No, I'm an healthy human. Didn't you just say you thought you were going to be sick? That's just a figure of speech. Do you realize you could have infected the whole show with human influenza? But I just got all my shots! You're a good-looking human, Harold, but you know the rules. You're out of the show. Oh, poor Harold. What a mess. You know, that I is... hate cleaning up after humans. <laughs> Good to know that trap door is conveniently placed under every contestant seat. Can we steal the uh, um, remote control from Dr. Titicle? Let's talk to him. See how he feels about that. Doctor! What is it? Is someone sick? We can't have sick humans in the show. Well, uh... <laughs> I oh, that laugh. all myself. They're all perfectly healthy looking to me, except for the dead one. Now leave me alone. Except for the dead one. And also, Harold has gone ill, so... I guess he's referring to the ones that are still in the show. Let's tell them to keep up the good work. Keep up the good work, you judges, you. Okay, that didn't re solicit any response. Hey, don't you Let's think start you going judge through the again? judgments again? Oh, all right. Oh, all right. Wow, that 
That's the best hair I've ever seen on a mummy. Thick and full and juicy. Juicy. The mummy wins. That's how I like to describe hair. You see, that's the juiciest hair I've ever seen. Ugh. And I like how it takes it out of the option, so let's do hey, Best Smile don't again. don't you think you should judge Best Smile again? Oh, all right. Of course, it makes sense now, since Harold is out of the running, that we do the judgments again. I like the quiet one with the big T. There's nothing in the rules about them being white. First place goes to the mummy. Agreed. I'm sorry, but that sounds kind of like, uh... I like the quiet one with big teeth. I sure do like big teeth. I mean, that's just where my head is going. It's horrible, I know, but... Alright. Hey, you don't sure you think do you should judge mouth. Best Laugh again? Oh, alright. Best Laugh. Alright, here we go. I like how they all have to, like... Turn okay, who's got a joke? Wall facing and then. Know. Why did the human cross the road? Because his tentacle owner told him to. <laughs> hey. It's amazing how the mummy can do that without moving his lips. I say we give him first place. Agree. Well, that makes him best of show. Let's go congratulate him. All right, here we go. He is very well preserved. I'll miss his laugh. You it's can take time it to with give you. him his winnings and start packing up. We got to get this whole show to Baltimore by Thursday. Everything is about Baltimore, so I'm wondering yes, if... Yes, our work here is done. If that's where their studio is or, or something. Uh, don't he look beautiful? This my human. He's so happy. <laughs> I guess I have to click something. Maybe? Or is the game completely frozen now? Okay, I'm having a concern right now. If I press spacebar, it takes me back to the menu, so it's obviously accepting input. There we go. Well, Ted, this is where we <laughs> part ways. Where we <laughs> part ways. Save humanity, even though you've been <laughs> dead for thousands of that years. Laugh. I think you're my. <laughs> Favorite Edison. So sad. Can we push the mummy again? No, he looks tired after all he's done. So it doesn't look like we can take anything off of him and put it back, so. He really is best Edison, no, yes. He looks tired after all he's done. Can we talk to Hello, him? my silent gauze wrapped friend. I've got to get power to my chronogen. Let's see, lightning storm. Maybe I could try to find some batteries. I might be able to use the hamster base, uh, hamster generator in the basement. Oh, oh well. Oh well. I really should go now. All right. Meanwhile. Lieutenant, I want to ask you something. It may trouble you. Ooh. Ask away, sir. I can take it. I've got a strong stomach, nerves of steel, bowels of brass. Bowels of brass. Suck at it, son. This is important. Have any of your friends seemed a bit firm lately? 
firm. Who? Heck! You mean like non-squishy and non-slimy? That's right. Come closer. Done. I've recently become suspicious that humans might try to infiltrate us. No! Though basically stupid, they can be tricky. They may be in disguise. Did you know? <laughs> All right. So we've still got to get the guard away from the clock. I'm sorry, but no one gets to this clock while I'm here. And unless I have to go chase down some escaped humans, I'm glued to this spot. Rats. Rats. Rats indeed. Okay. So, we've got to escape some humans. And we have Dinner this certificate. Two at Club Tentacle. Dang, it says tentacles only. Well, considering tentacle food, we'll probably not agree with you, Laverne. Let's give this trophy. I don't think so. For the fun of it, to the tentacle guard. I don't accept bribes. We start dead small. What about this gift certificate? Whoa! Dinner for two at Club Tentacle? I can't wait to tell my wife. Of course, after you were entirely hitting on Laverne for that entire time, now you're going to go tell your wife. All right, so he's gone. Let's look at the switch. Because that's what it's telling us. I think us. it controls the force field. Let's use the switch. You're free. You're free. Free to do what? Free to, to run wild through the woods like humans should. Big deal. You said you're free. Now get off your fat, lazy butts and start enjoying it. Enjoy being hunted for the rest of our lives by that mustached old tentacle with a big net. If we ran off, he'd be right on our trail. If we stay here, we know we'll be warm and comfortable. Outside, we'd be eating bugs and moss. You'll be eating my fist in a second. The woods are Another filled thing with wild animals, have. lions, tigers, and skunks. Man, skunks. I hate skunks. I hate skunks. Huh. I wonder. Oh, here I go out the door. Oh, I do so enjoy these freedoms that my forefathers fought and died for. Give it up. <laughs> Give it Sheesh. up. Sheesh. Hey, can we pick up the cards now that we're a tentacle? Probably marked. Hey, they can cheat. You can't. Don't you think it's odd that the tentacle in front of you has hands and an opposable thumb? Fingers. <laughs> oh look, there is a cat. Can't get close to him. Can we talk to the cat? Oh, it says walk to. Come on, talk to the cat. Nope. And we open the cat. <laughs> Can't get close to him. Can we use the spring ink on the cat? Can't get close to him. All right. So, there is a black cat. And if anybody has watched Looney Tunes, they know where this gag is going. Actually, let's see if we can add, give Laverne the red paint. I'm just curious. Pepe Le Pew. Precisely. So let's try the red paint with the fence. I think it's nicer white. White? Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Can we use the display? Not funny enough. What if we use the white paint? This ought to be good. This ought to be good. Hey. 
Unfortunately, now the cat is literally licking correctional fluid off of its back. So that's probably not good for it. Look at the fence. What a shabby paint job. Yeah, look what you did, Laverne. Can we paint I the fence? I think it's nicer white. All right, well, can you paint the rest I of it? I think with... it looks beautiful just the way it is. Well, good job. I'm glad you're proud of yourself. So let's pick up the cat. I can't get to it up there. I don't think so. All right. Now, we completed this earlier with Hoki, just because it was available with the mattress. Um, so I kind of skipped things, but Hoki... Cats dig these. Cats to take these. It is a squeaky mouse toy, so let's... Can we use the cigar lighter with the cat? I just... Or maybe use a book to make it fall asleep. Let's explore alternatives first. Somehow I don't think that will get him down. What about the scapula? I can't. My therapist and I have an agreement. <laughs> Not to kill cats with scalpels. All right. Good to know you have a therapist. Not funny enough. Can we use the extension cord to last? I don't it? think I could get him from here. Ooh, ooh. I don't think. I don't think so. I don't think I can put that in the chronogon. I think the trophy. There is one thing that we can do with it, um, but we'll figure that out later. All right, so this is a cat, and cats dig mouse toys, so. Well, what do we have here? Looks like a prosthetic rodent. Another specimen. Another specimen. And we use the scalpel on the cat now. Maybe later. This doesn't seem like the best place to start a panic. <laughs> I don't think I can put that in the chronogon. That only works on the alligators. Achievement unlocked. <laughs> can we use the cat? This doesn't seem like the best place to start a it... panic. Okay, best place to start a panic. So, let's look at the cat. Ooh, a skunk. How frightening. Ooh, a skunk. How frightening. <laughs> All right, so we have a fake skunk. Hey, look, a skunk. A skunk. Special art just for that. Come back here, you mangy human. You can't do this! This is an escape-proof facility! Who says you can't learn anything from cartoons, eh, kitty? They even reference cartoons, so there we go. Um, one thing that is... I'm, I, I'm just very curious about this. Humans being bipedal have legs that run extremely fast, and tentacles have suction cups for feet, or a suction cup for feet, and yet he's able to somehow catch humans. Hmm. In days, no, what was it, days, months, I can't remember, but still, something doesn't add up. All right, Faux Skunk. Congratulations, Kitty. You've saved humanity with your repulsive appearance. Now can we use the disappearing ink? I think I've had enough fun with Mr. Kitty. Now can we dissect him? I think I've had enough okay. fun with Mr. Kitty. Can we talk to him? Nope. All right. Well, he's in the cage, so let's go ahead and... Turn on the force field. Now I am the jailer, and you, you kitty, are my prisoner. Ha ha ha! 
Also, now that the human contest is over, I will go to that in a sec. One thing that we can do with the trophy. I don't think so. Use trophy. I don't think so. Oh. Misclick. Use Recyclotron with trophy. Nah, that might be useful. Oh, that's interesting, because I genuinely thought the trophy could be recycled. I don't think so. Nah, that might be useful. Nah, that might be That's useful. interesting, because I feel like in the original game, we were able to use the trophy with the Recyclotron. That's very interesting. Alright. Let's just walk over to the... Alright, there's nothing we can click on in the... Registration area for the human show. So now, we should be able to look at the clock. Ooh, there's a plaque. I did not look at the plaque. This 400-year-old clock is an amusing example of primitive human timekeeping. Oh, that's good. I wonder if that still leads down to Dr. Fred's old lab. Well, sure enough, it opens. Doing. She dives into it, but then walks down to the stairs as normal. It's the same generator that was in Dr. Fred's lab. Awesome, and it has outlets too. How convenient. Yep. I'd say that's where the juice comes out. Is it orange juice? Use the extension cord with the generator. And you use the cord with the window. Perfect. Time machine ruins. Let's look at those. Good riddance. <laughs> Can we use them? It's beyond repair. Oh well. Is there any junk in boxes? Probably just the tentacles winter uh winter things. Things. Can we pick them up? I'm not interested in tentacle junk. Well that's good. All right, so all we need to use the hamster generator is a hamster. Fortunately, we have a hamster. Let's send it to Laverne. I don't think I can put that in the chronojohn. Oh no, so how do we get a hamster to the future? This was one puzzle that took forever because I was not of cryogenic stasis, aka ice boxes. I'm sorry to do this to you, little fella, but it's for the future of the whole planet. And of course, nobody changes the ice, uses the ice, or touches the ice box for years to come. Well, let's be good stewards of this and close the icebox cover. Alright, Laverne, let's go get ourselves a hamster. Oh, look, there's an ice machine. Does it actually look identical to the one that's... Yep. Let's look at the ice machine. Hmm, looks like there's some kind of rodent down there. Look He's frozen solid. He sounds chilly just looking at it. That face. I, that's the face that I need to screenshot right there. <laughs> Solid. Let's use the lighter. I might hurt the little guy. I need something more high tech. More high tech. Hmm. What worms 
things up and is more high-tech than a cigarette lighter. How about a futuristic microwave? Because we're supposed to put hamsters in microwaves. I like how the hamster's eyes are moving in Gosh, the block of ice. I hope this isn't like the primitive, dangerous microwave ovens of my century. Those things could really pop a hamster good. Uh-oh. Gosh, that's scary. <laughs> Was fun, but only because this is the 22nd century. You see, kids who put hamsters in microwaves back where I'm from get taken away from their parents and put up for adoption. So don't do it. <laughs> Use cold, wet hamster. Man, it's funny because the hamster is leaning like against the eye, the um, icon box area, and looking up at you with significant judgment. Can we use the lighter with the hamster? I might hurt the little okay. guy. Do we have a towel? We use ink with Hamsters the hamster. Hamsters have no sense of humor. Everyone knows that. Although they are some of the most entertaining videos to watch on YouTube, just underneath cats. Nah. Can we dry him off by using the microwave again? I've already thawed him out. Besides, he won't let me insert the meat thermometer. Ugh. <laughs> I'll have to use the scalpel with the hamster. No, I've grown attached to the cute little guy. You just put him through a microwave and you're already attached with him. Nah. Okay. So at this point... Meanwhile... <clears throat> ah, Lieutenant. I'm glad you're here. What kept you? Well, I hate to say it, sir, but uh, there was some trouble with one of the humans. Ooh. Trouble? What Tru sort of trouble? Nothing I couldn't handle, but I've noticed something about the humans that may pose a problem. Interesting. Do continue. Well, sir, in general, they seem to be a bit larger than us tentacles. You know, taller, heftier, more massive. And I get the picture, son. I don't mean to carry on, sir. It's just that it makes me feel inadequate, small, inferior. Hmm. Out of Before you go off the deep end there, let me tell you why I called you here. You see, I've invented something which will end our troubles with those glandular leg walkers for good. I've invented the diminuator. The what? What? It's a shrinking ray, don't. don't. Oh, I get it. Now I need you to get me a few parts so I can finish the thing. Come over here. Come over here. Even though I can carry on a perfectly good conversation with you from across the room, I'm going to tell you to come closer to me so we can end this scene. All right. So we already know the habits of this cold, wet hamster are not conducive to work. But let's use the hamster with the generator. He won't run. He just shivers. He just shivers. So what do we need to keep a hamster warm? All right. So we know there's a sweater. We need to get the sweater to the future. We know that the sweater is under a big guy who moves when the bed vibrator is activated, which is activated by dimes. There is gum on the floor with the dime stuck to it. We need something to pry it off of the floor. In order to do that, we've got to get this guy keys to a car 
So the keys are hidden somewhere in this mansion. Some place that I have not looked yet. Well, looky there. The big guy left keys to his cars in the door. Let's look at the keys. There's a whole lot of keys on here. A lot of them. There's a whole lot of keys okay. on here. He didn't elaborate on it once we have it. Hey, look, we have some keys. Let's be very helpful to the kind masked gentleman outside. Talk Hi. to the kind man in ski mask. Say, I'm kind of busy. I'm kind of busy. Here, perhaps these are your keys. Here, perhaps these are your keys. Where? Gimme. Gimme. Hey, thanks, pal. Keep the crowbar. Thank you, masked man. Drat. Let's talk to him now that he has Hi. Keys. Look, I'm in a bit of a hurry, so kindly beat it. It yeah. must be one of these. Maybe this one. Hmm. Let's just walk away briefly. Give him some time. Let's look at the Bernard-shaped hole again. It's a hole shaped like me. I'm not proud of it, but there it is. Yep. The trunk is open. It's empty. It's empty. Now I wonder if it was empty the whole time. It's really dirty. I should have tried the keys on the car before I gave them over. That's what I should have done if I were smart. But alas, here we are. <laughs> awesome. So we have a crowbar. So at this point... Feeling a little Half Life too. Let's go for it now. <laughs> All right. Let's use the crowbar and get the dime off the floor. Sweet. And now we're going to chew gum that we just picked up off the floor. How pleasant. Also, okay, good. We get the wad of gum separately. I'm wondering. I just need to know. If we use the gum... With, uh... George Washington. I don't wanna. Oh, man, come on. So now John Hancock is Yo. cold. Please, Again. let me suffer in peace. Alright, so we can't talk to him anymore. Yo, Tom. Thomas. Thomas. So, how's the time capsule going? Very well. Now that you've provided that fine recent vintage wine, I plan to bury it this evening. Later, bra. What? What's going to happen later? Okay, so there's nothing new or interesting with him. Okay, what did I just do? Whoa, pre-chewed. Whoa, pre-chewed. What does Laverne have to say about it? It's been in someone's mouth, probably Bernard's, by the teeth marks. So she's a forensic expert. Spearmint, my favorite. Even though it looks like bubble gum, it is not white at all. Or blue. Alright, so we have a dime. A little sticky, but still worth ten cents. Also, I don't mind a little bit of vandalization. I love this part with the vending machine. V. 
because this is how vending machines eject their coins. Whack it, tap it gently with the crowbar. I figure this is about $876,600 worth of quarters. Also because vending machines can also handle greater than their volume in quarters. I wonder if they literally calculated out 200 years worth of coins for this. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Because he's giving an exact quantity here. I figure this is about $876,600 worth of quarters. Hmm. Let's pick them up. 1968. Good to know. 1974. This is like my, what my dad was like when he picked up coins. He would always... Ooh, 1977. He would always pick up um, coins and look at the dates. Much, much later. I figure this is about $876,600 worth of quarters. I really want to know if they actually calculated out 200 years worth of coins in coin laundry. Because that's where we're going next. But before that, let's use the dime in the coin slot once again. And to the floor with him. Let's pick up the sweater. Ew, it's soaking wet. My grandma gave me one like this for my birthday. Can we give that to the I firm? don't think I can put that in the chronojohn. Okay, so we can't put it in. So how do we get it to the future? Well, there is one room that is consistent between both um, present and future. Let us go to that room. Oh, yeah, that's right. Actually, I need to do this. You can actually just push the door without going through it. Oh, you can't pull it. Okay. The Duke Memorial brand microwave. Wrong size. Oh, you can't put the sweater in the Wrong microwave. Wrong size. And we put... I'd rather not. Quarters. What about the fork? Again, I'm doing this just to see if there's I'd any interesting, not. any interesting I'd interaction. Not. Violating the warranty. Okay, so we did get an achievement for using the fork in the microwave. Decaf wouldn't help there. Nope, I accidentally clicked on something. All right, so we can use the sweater with the dryer. It's a coin op. It's a coin operated dryer. Well, good thing we have coins. 25 cents for 30 minutes. So I'm wondering if. Let's see. I, I want, I'm going to do the numbers here. I want to do the math. Let's look at those quarters. I figure this is about $876,600 worth of quarters. Oh man, I don't have Excel. I'm going to have to do Google Docs. But I am curious enough about this. I want to see the numbers. We're going to bring up Google Drive, and I'm going to do a new sheet. We have to know the answer to this. All right, let's get that number one more time. I figure this is about $876,600 worth of quarters. 876 I figure this is about $876,600 worth of quarters. Okay. So if we take that number and so that's for 30 minutes of time. So if I take 200 years or let's just do this the other way. So Divided by twenty five. So 
So that's how many minute blocks, 30 minute blocks. And that's 35,064. And we multiply that by minutes. So time, so equals that times 30. We end up with 105,100, or 1 million 51,920 minutes. So divide that by equals this, divide by 60, figure out the number of hours, divide that by 24. Oops, I messed up my formula here. Equals that number divide by 24 hours to the day. Okay, I think I've done something wrong, but I am genuinely curious if that number somehow works out to the 200 years. Anyway, let's use the quarters with the dryer. Later that day, whew, whew. It's sort of hypnotic. Can we open the dryer? It'll be running quite a while. I put a lot of quarters in it. Oh, and one thing I failed to calculate was the... That was how many dollars worth of quarters. I didn't calculate then how many quarters that actually is. So I need to add that into it as well. I will do that later. I'll put that on Discord. I'm going to do the math, and I'll put it on Discord. We'll figure this out. So Laverne needs to get the um, sweater out of the dryer. Oops. I'm just clicking in random places now, apparently. Ding! Just finished. Let's look at the sweater. It's tiny. It's tiny. There's a little teeny tiny sweater in there. I guess it shrunk in the laundry. Ooh, cute. It shrunk to doll size. Send it. Oh, that's neat. You can actually send it um, around. Okay, Bernard does not have any interactions with that sweater. That's interesting. I'd rather not. Can't even use it with the dryer. Okay. Oh, I wonder what would have happened if we had the hamster and the small sweater ahead of time. And then tried to put it in the... Um... Icebox. That's very... That would be very interesting to try. Yep, Hoagie has no interaction with the sweater either. We use I it don't wanna. I don't wanna. Yeah. So only Laverne has interactions with the sweater. All right, well, we tried. Let's go back downstairs. So our cold, wet hamster. Use sweater with hamster. This ought to warm him up. I wish I had some formaldehyde. Ooh, that's scary. No, I've grown attached to the cute little guy. All right, so use the hamster with the generator now. Interesting. So we 
have a hubcap now. Fascinating. It has a dent in it shaped like my skull. Why did I pick this stupid thing up? <laughs> can we... I don't think I can put that in the chronogen. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, you can't interact with the... Oh, the glove apparatus. There's a face print on the glove. I hope it's sprung for good. Can we use it? It's done moving. Can we pick it up? I can't. Okay. So the hamster has hidden itself in a mouse hole. I'm sure he's in there. Well, then... What I need now is a vacuum cleaner. Now why isn't there a vacuum cleaner down here? Every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. Gosh, if that isn't the hint of the century, I don't know what is. Not my type. Not my type. You use pickup with mouse hold in it. She says, not my type. I don't think I can open it. Can we use the ink with Not the funny hold? enough. Can we use the lighter with it? It's not a toy. All right. Gobble. I can't. My therapist and I have an agreement. I'd rather not. Okay, so there's... Hey, can we use the toy mouse with the mouse hole? I think not. I think not. Okay, fine. Fine, Laverne. Have it your way. So every American needs to have a vacuum in their basement. What a it's hint. It's from George's Hardware. George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. Oh gosh, if George says that, you better make that a suggestion for the Constitution. That every American should have a vac vacuum in their basement. <clears throat> Boy, it's sure quiet in here. I wonder if there might be any ideas worth discussing in the suggestion box. Maybe somebody should take a look. I say, lads, I have an idea. Does it have anything to, to, to do with starting a fire? No. I was thinking it's about time we open the suggestion box. Don't you agree? Sure, George, if you say so. Yes, whatever you think is fine with us. Excellent. What's he thinking? No one of any importance has been here all day. What could be in the suggestion box? Perhaps he intends to suggest something himself. Oh. Ah, here's a suggestion. It says, George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. What do you think, gentlemen? Whatever you say, George. Your name's on it. I'm sure you must have a good reason for suggesting it. Yes. It's strange. I don't quite... Well, I'm sure I had a reason for it. If there are no objections, we shall add it to the Constitution immediately. No? Good. And so shall it be law. Da -da -da. What's a vacuum cleaner? Ding. Like how the vacuum cleaner's brand name is You Suck. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's how you empty the vacuum cleaner, I guess. It has a door on the side. But I like how in the present there is no vacuum cleaner. President Alien Tentacle steps in. I am in charge here. So even though it's law, there is no vacuum cleaner in the present timeline basement. Or at least I'm not seeing one. Let's go a little further to the left. See if one just happens to show up. Nope. 
besides the fact that he created mutant tentacles and is dumping gallons upon gallons of sludge into the basement or into the uh, river water, he's also breaking the law without a... Uh... That's a fair point. It could be hiding like behind the stairs there. That's fair. That's fair. I'll give him that much. That he's hiding his vacuum. All right. And it is a built-in shop back. All right. So, use the shop back with disappearing ink. I don't do housework. But you're about to use the vacuum to get the hamster. That face, that face is scary. <laughs> Open Hatch. Look at Hatch. Look at There's Dust Ball. There's a hamster in there, I think, or at least pieces of one. I was expecting like a very maniacal chucker, chuck, chucker, chuckle out of that. Dusty warm hamster. I wish I had some formaldehyde. And we use the hamster again with it. Well. Well. Da, 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 da. Look at that sucker go! He just keeps running and running and running. It's the same generator that was in Dr. Fred's lab. So we can't interact with the hamster directly anymore. All right. He used to just bring it with the generator. Not funny enough. All right, fine. All right. So I think it's the hubcap that we can use with the Recyclotron. Let's go ahead and do that because we want to be responsible citizens. Sure, I guess I won't be needing it. Yep, and sure enough, you can recycle it. Ooh. I don't think I can put that in the chronogen. I wonder if they're what the use is for the trophy. Because at this point, we have technically powered up the chronogen. Let's go ahead and finish that up. Use extension cord with the plug. Mm -hmm. Spoiler. It and the hubcap are the only items... Are the only not used items. Okay. That is good to know, because I genuinely thought there... Since it couldn't be recycled, that there might be a use for it somewhere. Let's give it to Purple Tentacle just for the fun of it. I just really want to try. Hang on, can it be... Okay, the shelf is not an interactable um, item. No time to relax. I'm trying to save the... <laughs> I don't think so. Give trophy to Purple Tentacle. I don't need your paltry offerings. <laughs> oh well. Oh, and one thing I didn't look at was the judges area after the contest is over. Like we can't even put it back in the case. And there's 
nothing else up here to look at. All right, I had to try. I really wanted to try. All right, so at this point, we have finished Laverne's, um, Laverne's path, and her chronogen is powered. So the only thing that we have left is Bernard's path. And we are going to go buy a diamond next week. Um, actually, this weekend. Is, uh, yep, Saturday is... Let's see, Friday is New Year's, so yeah, Saturday. So this coming Saturday, we will continue our adventure down Bernard's path, and we will buy ourselves a diamond. In the meantime, uh, we'll also, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of time and look at, see if there's any other interactions that we can do before we start to wrap things up. Um, just because I want to see how high of a percentage that I can end up getting. Um, as a matter of fact, this is a great time. If we hit escape here, let's save the game and see what we're at. We are at 85%. Now, I will say, I have played this game through, um, where I did kind of a minimalist run and got 35%. So the fact that we're at 85% is actually pretty neat. Um, I don't think by default that you get that, uh, get 100% with just a straight through run. Unless I saved over my old game with a partial game. and Anyway. But having said that, Thank you so much for joining me. This has been fun to um, go through this. Um, I hope that you all are having fun with me. And I hope that you all join me this Saturday as we continue our adventures in Day of the Tentacle. Until then, again, thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you all next time for another old school game.